This is Mike Lively and today I've put together a little uh, color code resistor site and I want to show you how to do that. Now the whole point of this is to show you how to dynamically change materials in a way 3D. So the way the color code uh, calculator works is there's four bands. It's band 1, band 2, band 3, and band 4. And band 4 is your tolerance. And then band uh, 1 and 2, those are actually the uh, decimal numbers and then band 3 is your multiplier. And it's pretty easy, and you can actually stop the animation if you want to. We'll let it go around here one cycle. And you have these drop-down boxes here. You can actually choose a different color and switch those colors. So let's go ahead and stop the animation, pause it. You can start it again if you want, and you can pause it. And let's just choose a different color. And when you do that, you get brown, for example, which is actually 1. And you can see right here you got a 1.1 K ohm resistor because brown is 1, brown is 1, red is a multiplier of uh, 3 and then uh, silver is your tolerance. Let's go ahead and there's your silver band right there. Looks like a football game, doesn't it? So you can just come along here and just change bands all day long and they're so pretty attractive. It just shows you pretty much how you can actually interactively change bands uh, in a way 3D. Now that's just changing materials. Now how do I do this? Well the whole magic of this is actually happening in Cinema 4D. So this is a Carlotta file right here. And what I've done with this Carlotta file, I've actually created this Cinema 4D. Let's take a look at Cinema 4D real quick. And there's my Cinema 4D. And what I did is I drew a resistor right here. And then I created different segments. And you can see there's segments here for each of the bands. And I put a material in those segments. Let's go ahead and uh, control R this so you can see it. There's my resistor right there. And so basically all I did was I, I created uh, these segments and I put materials on these segments. And when I uh, exported the Carlotta file, each one of those materials had a name. And I just, in a way, 3D replaced those named materials. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code real quick here. We'll get out of this program. Let's go to the code. And all this is being done in Adobe Flex. So you immediately see I have these uh, drop down boxes. All I had to do was actually pull over. So all I had to do is actually pull these uh, drop down boxes or combo boxes from the components panel and then just program them. So it's pretty easy to work with. And uh, let's just go to the code real quick so I can just show you a few things. So we're in Adobe Flex right now, and here's the program. And one thing you do if you open up the assets you see here in the images are all my different colors. And so I'm switching these materials in and out on my resistor. And in addition, uh, there's the Carlotta files. And I actually tested a few of them and actually came with this resistor stand third two, and that's the one I'm actually using for this program. Let's take a look at the code real quick here. If you open up the source view in Adobe Flex, see it's pretty easy because let's go back to design. What I did is I just went to Windows and went to Components and just dragged the components over that I needed. In this case, it was a combo box, and so I just dragged the combo box or the checkbox over and then I programmed it in uh, Adobe Flex. And then I come along here and let's go to source view. And just a few key points right here is I'm changing materials in and out, so I have to have a way to do that. So let's go ahead and. Uh, link through that combo box. So if you want to follow a program just use your control click trick. So I go here and let's take a look at the first band because we're going to change the first band. Hit the combo box, go to source view and it highlights that portion of code in the source view. When I close the box this change events fired. What does that do? Well basically what it does it goes to my model resistor that's been parsed by my Carlotta file. It goes to my material uh, library, gets the material ID18. Where I get that from? That comes from the Carlotta file. So whenever I generate a Carlotta file, I want to go in there and read that Carlotta file and determine what material is being assigned where. And then I just have a material array and I'm assigning a different material to each band. So it was very easy to put together. So if you like this, feel free to download it. Go to my www.professionalpapervision.wordpress.com site and you can actually get this uh, for free. So the other thing I want to show you is how to calculate the resistance. It was extremely e easy. So I have this little calculate resistance method right here. And all I do is I, I just take the first digit, and that's my tens place. So I multiply it by 10, plus the second digit. That's my ones place. And then I take the third digit, which is the multiplier, and I just take it to a power of 10. And then I have a little string right here that tells me uh, what my tolerance is. So it, looks at that, so it looks at that fourth band and gives me my tolerance. So all this is done with arrays and uh, just a really easy program to do, just switching materials in and out from the geometry library. Let's run it one more time and take a look at it. There it is. Let's go ahead and pause the animation right there and just switch the bands in and out. Very easy in a way 3D. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, you know things are moving 3D and that's what we want to do. Here's my none. I really was proud of that. So no band there at all or a tolerance of there. And you see as I change things, everything is changed and calculated up here. Easy to build. So you just need a little mastery of Cinema 4D and once you do that you can build any type of Carlotta file you want. 
and use Adobe Flash Builder to build interfaces very rapidly to interact with your 3D. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. See you next time.